You might think of stop motion animation as a dying form of film, but there is a fascination with the way stop motion is produced. The tedious hours of moving a figure, then snapping a picture, then moving, then snapping, over and over, and all of that for the product to look clunky and awkward. Why would anyone want to spend that much time when you can get the same product but better and in half the time with CGI? However, this is not how animators see it, and for those in the industry, they want it to stay alive. But unfortunately, the new age of CGI has swept over and it is not forgiving. My name is Brandon Noguchi and today I'll be discussing the effects of CGI on stop motion animation. The earliest documented stop motion film was in 1898 called The Humpty Dumpty Circus. The directors J. Stuart Blackton and Albert E. Smith used their daughter's dolls to create acrobats and animals in motion. Many other short animations were created, but it wasn't until the early 1920s when full-length productions would be made. Soon after followed a plethora of stop-motion films and would go on to be responsible for some big-name movies such as King Kong in 1933, The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad in 1957, and many more. To the boats, quickly. Many of the techniques that were developed in the early stop-motion days are responsible for some of the techniques used in today's films. In the 1970s, stop motion was one of the most utilized visual effects techniques, and by the 80s, stop motion films were doing so well, they eventually found their way to television where popularity for these types of films were in much demand. There were a number of commercials, TV shows, as well as movies that were being produced in stop motion at this time. In the meantime, computer-generated imagery, or CGI, was experiencing its own upbringing. But how does CGI work? Well first, designers create a series of computer-generated graphics that stem from a series of drawings or images of a scene. Then those graphics will be very finely detailed and implemented into an already filmed scene. So during the 1950s, mechanical computers would be repurposed to create patterns onto animation cells which were then incorporated into a feature film. The first form of CGI to be used in a featured film was in 1958 for the opening credits of Vertigo where it pictured spiral motions. From then on, CGI would be experimented and used in numerous films such as Westworld in 1973 or Tron in 1982, which blended CGI and live action film. Many other movies would go on to use CGI and the artistry of the skill would get better as well. In 1993 is when CGI really changed the game. Steven Spielberg came out with Jurassic Park, which mixed animatronics with CGI with live action and more. The crazy son of a bitch, you did. This is where stop motion really felt the effects of CGI, and as a result saw a decline in popularity as the ease of CGI would produce much faster production times. As CGI got better, so did the money in it. One of the notable movies that made a lasting imprint was Toy Story in 1995. It was the highest grossing film during its opening weekend, eventually earning over $373 million at the worldwide box office. Now compared to its counterpart two years earlier, the Nightmare Before Christmas reached only $89 million. When it comes to the price of production, stop motion can be more or less of the price of CGI. However, the real price comes in the time and effort. Stop motion takes a lot of small meticulous movements. In a screen animation, 24 pictures is the equivalent to 1 second. So if your movie is going to be an hour to some odd minutes, have fun with that. This also does not account for the time it takes to switch and change out parts and sets. The whole process of stop motion would seem very tedious to most. From making molds to designing sets, setting up lights, all of those require a lot more physical movements in comparison to sitting in a chair and essentially making the same end product. At this point, why would anyone want to endeavor into the endless course of making a stop motion production? Well, the fact of the matter is, a lot of people do. With this age of technology, there are more platforms for creators and animators to put out content such as YouTube that allow for smaller projects to be displayed. Sure, you can make the same story with CGI, but stop motion is a type of art form. It is a refined skill that takes patience, but pays off in the end. As Tim Burton once said, there's an energy with stop motion that you can't even describe. It's got to do with giving things life. This is something you can't feel with any other form of animation. It is so unique and that's why the art form is still alive today. One reason stop motion is still prevalent today is Leica. Leica is a major stop motion studio whose CEO, Travis Knight, is responsible for award-winning films such as Caroline, Paranorman, and Box Trolls. One way Knight is able to be so successful in an age of CGI is through the use of 3D printing. Before, crews would have to make face molds of various emotions as well as faces that make different letter sounds. 
and each syllable would have to be made in different emotions. This process can be very long and costly. 3D printing, however, allows animators to make thousands of different faces for characters at a much faster pace than in the past. This has been a helpful tool that allow animators to be more productive. These things that you see on screen that have life, that are moving, that are talking, that are emoting, they are inert objects. The only life that anything has on the screen is by virtue of the life that the animator imbues into these objects. And I think that there's something that's, just, that's really beautiful and human about that, that you're seeing effectively the hands of an artist at work that is bringing life, that is coaxing life to this inanimate thing. Another way stop motion is still alive today is by combining stop motion with digital effects. That's right, fight fire with fire. In recent stop motion movies, such as Kubo, animators are starting to blend the world of stop motion with CGI to create unreal visuals. Leica's employees came up with some crazy devices to simulate effects. As we see in this clip, this device is set up to simulate waves, but CG is later added for more detail. Impressive. Leica Studios is not the only one to incorporate CGI. Nick Park, creator of Wallace and Gromit, said, We've always been open to using technology, and we always have digital effects that we just can't do with model or clay, like smoke, explosions, and sometimes water. Ardman, a studio co-founded by Park, used CGI effects in the 2018 movie Early Man to reciprocate what would have been 30,000 puppets. Obviously a time saver there. CGI has obviously become so big that almost all films use it to an extent. This has pushed stop motion out, but it has also pushed stop motion to be better. With the decline of stop motion, animators and producers had to find ways to make it new and refreshing. This is where all the incorporations of different shooting styles and animatronics come into the same scene. Animators are able to utilize the best of both worlds and create a new form of stop motion that viewers are not used to seeing. And with CGI, this has just added more to the story. See, the great part about these creators is that they're able to adapt and change while still keeping the same story. That feel of a stop motion production is still captured but with more attention to detail. That's why stop motion is not a dead art. It is still very much alive and will be for a while. It is a long, painstaking process, yes, but people who find a fascination with it will find new ways to keep it new and alive as they have with CGI. That's why I don't think stop motion is going anywhere soon. And to tell you the truth, stop motion is in its prime right now. With the ability to use animatronics, CGI, claymation, computer animation, all these resources have made stop motion to be the best version of itself. Stop motion is only getting better and there's no telling where it'll go next. And on that note, I leave you with a quote from one of the greatest animators in history, Ray Harryhausen. He said, there's a strange quality in stop motion photography like in King Kong that adds to the fantasy. If you make things too real, sometimes you bring it down to the mundane. This has been the effects of CGI on stop motion animation. Thank you.